Our business generates anywhere from 70 to 150 million dollars. Got your girl call me baby. Wetter than sell in the Navy. Oh, bitch from Mercedes. 100k on the daily. So kind of I'm making rainy. Who are some of the celebrities you worked with? Kim Kardashian, Tom Holland, Jamie Foxx, Lloyd May. And the list goes on, huh? Pass, look so spacey. Hey. Money a lot is a trade. Oh, for that. Boys and girls, men and women. We are in the middle of some random alley in Beverly Hills, Los Angeles, California. Right now, we're about to go link up with the one and only RD, AKA Wires Only. You tell me I'm someone you want. You tell me I'm something you need. But baby, you know that I'm bad for you, yeah. Why you gotta be so naive? Has his own TV show, Million Dollar Wheels. Works with a ton of celebrities. I'm talking Jamie Foxx, Kim K, Aubrey, Drake, Graham. And on top of that, he makes a lot of money. Over a hundred mil. So you guys already know, on Snooze Knows, we're gonna pick his brain. We're gonna see how he started from the bottom to where he is right now. So I got a special treat for y'all. Also, this channel is all about providing value. Whoever watches this channel, I want y'all to be successful. I want you to level up in your life. That's why I have a private community with entrepreneurs, multimillionaires, where we all get to literally talk to each other, learn from each other from the palm of your hands. So if you're in a nine to five and you're trying to get out, or you're just simply trying to collaborate with another successful individual, whatever the case may be, or you're just simply trying to make more money, this community is for all of that. You cannot level up without a solid network. You need people to hold you accountable to be able to be the very best version of yourself. If you really want success for yourself, put yourself around like-minded individuals. Click the link in the description below. Remember, your network is your net worth. Let's get the video started. We're walking, come on, we're walking all the way. <laughs> I think that's what we're supposed to do, right? My man. My guy. Ooh, pleasure. Sersky, he finally made pleasure it. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, I just put a body kit. Yeah. Forge carbon whips, you ready? Let me falls rich. Welcome, brother. Hell Welcome. yeah, hell yeah. For the people that don't know who you are, they're seeing yeah. you for the very first time, right? Yes, sir. Who are you? RD from Wires Only. Okay, and that's, you got a show. I got a show, Million Dollar Wheels on Discovery Plus. Okay. Um, also on HBO Max. After you're watching The Idol, you can check out our show. That's fire. It's amazing and you will love it. It's so all about cars. So, so you're famous? A little bit, maybe. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't know if I'm that famous. It's just, you know, we partnered with our guys at Discovery Channel and we got to document some of our sales with some of the biggest clients in the world, so it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Who are some of the celebrities you worked with? Kim Kardashian is probably my favorite. Okay. Tom Holland, of course our boy yeah. Jamie Foxx. Uh, Jay Balvin, Bad Bunny. YG, Floyd Mayweather, Dana, this goes on, huh? the kids, Scott Disick, Travis Barker, you know, it just goes on and on. I mean, probably we have one of the biggest client lists yeah. there is. We've been fortunate enough to work with Alpha. What do you do exactly in terms of, just, besides the show, mm -hmm. you sell cars, you broker cars? Yeah, we, what, what else? We, we sell cars, we sell jets, we sell boats, we're the dealer for cigarette boats. Okay. You know, you see a lot of those in Miami, cigarette racing. We do anything lifestyle. So we help people make the most important investments of their lives. They get to have fun while they do it. How much is your business generating per year? Our business generates anywhere from 70 to $150 million per year. Damn. We gotta yeah. pick this guy's brain. Let's, let's, let's do Absolutely. the tour, let's do this. Come on in. Baby, you bad, you don't even know it. Both have a pass, yeah, we been hot. Bro. This is a new 23 Phantom. Okay. Um, you know, it has starlight in the in the headlights now. Okay, okay. Cobalt blue interior. Nice. One of my favorite setups. Now these cars that we're looking at here, are they for sale? Are they your cars? I mean, it, it, it all depends. Some of it's my personal collection. Okay. Some of it's for sale. Wait, how much is this Rolls Royce uh, for? This one is gonna be, I think around 700. <laughs> 700? Yeah, so it's a 23 Phantom. Wow. You have two Brabus uh, 4x4s as well. Both Brabus, both matte black, both incredible. How much? In the fives. In the fives? Yeah, Damn, in the fives for crazy. sure. Come on in, let's take a walk, Ooh. Marlon. This is my personal baby, not for sale, but this is A12 Competition. This one's not for sale. Not for sale? Or how um, much could you sell for? I mean, the sticker on this car is like around around 900 but it's my personal car again not for sale so you got to check Dang, this out bro, executive a lot of money in here huh? executive style Ooh. becker brand new build so is this a, a cadillac escalator this is an escalate stretch wow. 26 inch stretch go ahead and dive in there check it out oh my goodness executive this is six hundred thousand dollars this is a three-year wait for real yeah steve jobs jeff bezos r.i.p steve jobs but jeff bezos um zuck 
those guys get their SUVs from the same company. I see. And uh, this is one of the nicest builds. As you can see, it's brand new. Yeah. And it has the same Rolls Royce blue interior as the Phantom outside. You know, you have the power curtains, cooler, TV. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, partition. Everything. Tore you could, my AC. Yeah. <laughs> everything you, you can imagine. So we also make these so kim kardashian was one of our first clients that we did one of these custom maybacks for it's kind of cool because when you're in it it doesn't really look like anything special from the outside but you know obviously the inside is completely decked out with damn you know maybach lighting maybach wow. seats etc how much is this made back going for? These go from anywhere from $199 to $299, depending on customization and the features. Some Absolutely. of them have partitions, some of them don't. A lot of people love these because they're easy to park. They're not as big as a sprinter, so you can get them in and out of spaces. Yeah. You tell me I saw what you want. You tell me I saw what you need. But baby, you know that I'm bad for you, yeah. Why you gotta be so naive? My all-time favorite car in here right now is this Carmel Damn. Edition Range Rover. If you look if you look closely, you'll see with the matte paint is color matched to the wheels. This is one of 17 for the world. So there's 10 of these cars what? in the US. There's four cars in California. There's 17 in the world. This comes with tailor-made golf clubs, Land Rover tailor-made golf clubs. Mm -hmm. So when you buy this car, you go to TaylorMade, they size your size you for the clubs, yeah. and they make two custom sets of clubs for you. What's super cool about this, if you look, if you come closer, you check out the refrigerator. Oh, what? what? Opens, opens and closes. Oh. And then if you look closely, you got your SV oh, glasses, nice. and it holds champagne as well. And then it has the um, picnic tables that are powered oh, that go wow. up and down as well. <laughs> That's wild. That's Fully, full, fully reclining. What do you think the MSRP is on this car? I'm gonna say 250. The normal one's about 250. This one yeah. is 346. You had to get an invitation from Range Rover to be able to, to purchase even, yeah. purchase this car. They had to hand select you. Oh wow. What are, what are some of the requirements to you to be had hand selected? To, I believe you had to be a previous SV owner mm. and have multiple Range oh, Rovers. Yeah, there you go. There's a sticker. But this is the sticker. This is the most Ooh. expensive Range Rover they have ever made in yeah, the history. I can see that of Range Rover. So you see, it's three hundred forty-six thousand five hundred seventy-five dollars, twenty twenty-three bespoke match to sample yellow satin. We'll jump over here Damn. to the big boy, Countach. Ooh, the Countach. Yeah. Oh yeah. One of my favorites, one of 112 Damn. cars. Wow. For the world, that this is, is the fire. only one that they made with a red steering wheel. Really? Yes, so this has the red steering wheel, the white stitching, the glass roof. The MSRP on this car is 2,770. And you got this right here, the Kona Sega. Yes. Ooh, look at this. All -time the key favorites. is crazy. We got to yes. show the camera. Show the look key. at this. Look at this key. Check this out. Look, 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 look. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. Wow. Key is crazy. One of three cars in full carbon fiber. Only 35 miles, 1,500 horsepower. Wow. Hybrid. Yeah. Plugs into the wall. See, most people don't know about Conan Seg. If they see it on the street, they're like, what is this, a McLaren? The car is fully oh carbon goodness. fiber. Yeah. If you pan down to the wheels, you'll see the wheels are fully carbon that as well. That is ridiculous. So this car is the real deal. Come wow. around the back, let me show you the engine compartment. Absolutely stunning. So how fast do these go? Zero to 60. They're, all, they're up there. <laughs> I drove the car to service the other day to get a full service done at, at O'Gara. Yeah. And it's very, very quick. Pan over here, this is you know, one of you know, my favorite Lamborghinis in all time history. Mm -hmm. This is the Revington. This is what they modeled after the fighter jet. When you turn the car on, it looks like a fighter jet cockpit. This is beautiful. If you look closely, you'll see this car is actually numbered five of 20 for the entire world. Check no that way. out. Only yeah. 20 of these? Only 20. The wow. plaque is right inside. This is Thank you. This car has 440 original miles. That's it. That's it. Two owner car. Huge collector piece. That's wild. When yeah. this car came out, you got to remember it was in 2008. Yeah. You can see how ahead of its time. Oh yeah, no, for sure. And that's when it transitioned to the Venador, right? Correct. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. One of my all it's not, it, it doesn't even look outdated. Like, but yeah, just, but that's what I'm saying. If you drove this car down the street today, it gets uh, it gets a lot, a lot of looks. That, 
So this is the office. This is one of our sales manager's office. These are Tom Bates Designs Ferrari desks. What the? Absolutely insane. <laughs> Everyone freaks out about them. They are real working Ferrari engines. You can see one here as well. They're absolutely stunning. Can you turn it on right now? You can. Yeah. It <laughs> might take a minute. Uh, black badge Cullinans. Nice. Three in a row. This one is special. This is kind of a Tiffany blue. Yeah. This is one of the oh. first cars that they ever did with factory color blue starlight. Yeah. 23 Urus S. Beautiful interior. Wanted to show that to you so you could check it out. Oh, yeah. These are going for like three? Yeah, yeah, something like that, 339, something like that. Eric Spofford actually was just here for the driven Shout event. Eric, ooh. He just yep. came in, guy is a savage. He was like, hey, I wanna go by the store. It was Sunday. Yeah. I was like, bro, we're closed. He's like, I don't care, open it up. <laughs> we drive here in the comp, we walk in, he's like, I don't know what's, what's, what's available. I said, I mean, you can get whatever you want. He's like, you know what, I'll take this G-Wagon. Damn, just like that. Just like that. That's what's up. <laughs> and then he bought a dog and a G-Wagon while he was that here. That is sick. My friend, the good dog, brought the dog to the airport. He flew home with the dog and this is going on a truck. That's fine. Uh, he bought this for a gift for someone and it's, it's going uh, shipping out, I think tomorrow or the next day. Come on in, brother, let me show you my office. Take this a look. is a nice setup, okay. So we make all the deals happen. Okay. Some of the clients that we work with, some of our friends. Kim K, yeah. Drake. Yeah, you know Drake. How the many boy. cars are you doing with Drake? I bought a few cars from Drake. For real? Yeah, he's the biggest. Damn. He's the man. You gotta check this glass out. It's pretty dope. What the hell? Just That's hit a button. Crazy. Mayweather, Balvin, Tyson. Wow. Probably the guy that I had the most fun with on here. Obviously, my dog Jamie. Jamie. I'm gonna go, this you is Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke. God spot, rest huh? him. Victor Victor. Shout out to Steven Victor. I worked on this album with them and did, uh, I wrote and, and uh, produced a song, She's Feeling Nice with, with Jamie. So, they so you're, said, a, you're a jack of all trades, sent, huh? They sent me a plaque. <laughs> yeah, it's my first plaque, first plaque in a plaque. That's wild. You still, you still produce and write? Yeah, or? of course. We're any doing, any we're projects doing, coming we're, up? We're doing the Wires Only album. No way. Yes. Wires when does that drop in? It's, it's coming soon. We're actually, um, we're actually building out the studio. My girl Sam, can't forget her. Okay. She's always holding me down. It's wifey right there. She got the bonsai in Maya. I'm, I'm about to buy that bitch a car. I'm about to send RD the wire. He said, I'm about Pop to buy this bitch a car. I'm going to send RD the wire. RD, thank you yes, for sir. the tour. My Appreciate pleasure. that. Got some beautiful cars in here. Thank you, G. Now, how long have you been doing this for? Man, I bought my first whip at the auction when I was like 15 years old. 15 years old. Yep. Okay, and, and how old are you right now? I am 39. 39, so <laughs> over 20 years. Yes. That's wild. For sure. So how did this whole thing come into fruition, really? So you, you bought a car at 15. I Is went, that when you started at 15? So, <clears throat> you know, in order to get into the car auction, you had to um, either have a license or be on someone's license. Mm-hmm. So my best friend, uh, his dad was like, hey, we'll go to the auction together. We'll find someone. He was like a mechanic. Yeah. And you would give him like a case of beer and he would fix any car. Okay. Like he was a master mechanic. So he goes, I'll go with you to the auction and I'll help you find someone that you can use their license. And okay. I was like, man, Pa, his name was Pa. He was the greatest. I was like, man, you know what? That's crazy. So we go in, him and I, and there's an old, redneck guy sitting in the cafeteria yeah and paul's like man he's like this is the guy i'm like nah pa, this ain't it. <laughs> i'm like yo this ain't the guy he's yeah. like yeah for sure and the guy's sitting down he's eating he's eating his lunch and paul goes up to him he's like look this is my son rd i'm white paul's black yeah and this guy's a like, yeah that's funny country guy and yeah. he's like but he was like my dad. He was my best friend's dad. Yeah. We played play basketball together, whatever. The country you hoop? Guy, yeah. Oh, so shit, the, country the country guy's looking the country guy's looking at me crazy. He's yeah. like, man, he's like, how wait, this doesn't make any sense. And he's like, no. He's like, this, he's like my godson and he wants to buy some cars at the auction. Yeah. And he goes, Okay, we make a deal right there in the cafeteria. He's like, Okay, it's four hundred dollars per car. Buy whatever you want, pay for them. You pay me 400 per car. Okay. So Pa was like, see, I told you, let's go. Just like that, huh? <laughs> Just wow. like that. So we went, we had a meeting with him at his office. He signed us up and we go to the auction. Now this time, Pa doesn't come with me. I go with the, the old hillbilly guy, just him and I. Yeah. So it was in Orlando and we had to drive to Coco. It was like an hour away. Is that where you grew up? 
out on the East Coast in Florida. Got you. This guy was smoking joints the entire way, like blazed out of his mind. And I'm yeah. like, man, I'm like, I'm getting high secondhand smoke. I'm like, yo, <laughs> I'm like, yo, my man, like, I'm trying to focus. This is like the biggest purchase of my career. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, how do you smoke before the auctions? He's like, he's like, sir. This is how I get my mind right. He's like, shut up now. I'm like, yo, I'm relying on you to yeah. make sure I don't make any mistakes, yeah. right? I saved up like 10 grand or something at the time. Okay. And uh, we get to auction, he's like, don't buy anything. Don't buy anything. He's like, just code this first time and like get a feel for it. Okay. And I was like, man, I got you. Yeah, I was like, yeah, no problem. So I go in and this, this blue Chevy Caprice comes in and it says 34XXX. Yeah. So I'm bidding, it's like $100, $200, $300. <laughs> I'm like, yo, wait, I'm looking around. I'm like, I'm bidding on it like crazy. Yeah. So I get the car for like 600 bucks, okay. first one. Wow. So I'm like, oh man, this is it. Like this, this, this is so cheap. The car runs and drives for 600 right. bucks. It was all blue. Damn, yeah, I, 600 bucks. 600 bucks. Yeah. So I go open the door. The door jams were yellow. Oh my gosh. It, had, it didn't have 34,000 miles. It had 345,000 wow, yeah, miles. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> it was a taxi cab from New York that they oh spray God. painted blue. Wow. The old guy comes over to me. He's like, man, what are you doing? He's like, I told you not to buy yeah. anything, boy. He's like, what's wrong with you? I still have like seven or eight grand left. Yeah, yeah. So I'm buying that. Lincoln Continental, you know, this car, that car. So you're still oh, buying even yeah, though Yeah, I'm still you. buying. I'm like, <laughs> you know I'm like, I'm going to figure this out. Yeah. And so, you're 15. Like, between 15 and 16. This wow. is right when I have my learner's permit. Yeah. Because I just wanted to have a nice car. In, like, in Florida, people drive the Caprices and Impalas and Donks, and that was the car culture. So I was looking at this car like, oh, man, this would be a sick, you know, old school wheel, put yeah. some wheels on it, blah, 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 whatever. So you were just trying to buy a car just to drive. You weren't even I was wanting one to business. drive, plus I wanted one to flip. Okay. So okay, I was okay. just figuring out who was gotcha. the source, right? Yeah, yeah. So I figured if I could get right to the source, then I could make the best deal. Right. So I get in the Caprice, right? I go to crank it, it starts. I'm like, oh man, like this, this thing still runs for 600 bucks. I pull out of the auction to leave. Mm-hmm. It's like pitch black, car breaks down. Oh my god! I'm like, man, I'm on, the, on my phone. Like I call Pa, I'm like, yo Pa, I'm at the auction. I bought a bunch of cars. The one that I'm in that I like the most has 340,000 miles. It broke down, I'm on the side of the road. He was like, you got enough money for a case of beer? I was like, yeah. He was like, okay, I'm coming. Okay. He loved to drink Ice House beer. Yeah. I'll never forget it. So I gave him the money. He went to the gas station, bought the beer, came back, went to like Pet Boys. Yeah. Bought a distributor cap and some spark plugs and changed them on the spot on the side of the road. Car fires right up. He's That's like, oh, funny. he's like, it's nothing. Just distributor cap, spark plugs. And he's like, oh, yeah. And I got some uh, Freon, how you used to recharge yeah, yeah, AC. Yeah. And I recharge AC. You're good to go. Yeah, that's funny. Like two minutes. Yeah, that's fix, funny. Yeah. Like an hour, really. Fix the car and I'm back on the road. Okay. So I get back. I detail it up. I put it was in the paper back then, like the, the actual book, Auto Trader. So I put it in the book. Now, boom, a week goes by and the paper comes out. Guy calls me. He's like, what's up, bro? This is so-and-so from... Uh, um, I'm calling on that Chevy Caprice you have. I'm like, yo, what's up, bro? How are you? I'm letting you know now. It has 345,000 miles. It is a V6. It is not a V8. I just bought the car, and I'm asking, like, two grand for it. Yeah. He, he was like, oh, man, that's perfect. He goes, I own a cab company, and I'm looking for more cabs. He's like, I'm on the way. It all works out. Yeah. It all works yeah. out. The guy pulls up, pays me, I think, negotiated down to, like, I don't know, 1900 or 1800 bucks or whatever. Okay. But I like, I doubled my money. You like a $1,200 profit from that? Made a profit. Okay. But that was one of the first deals that I ever did in the car business at the auction. Yeah. Now, 14, 15, like who instilled that, uh, like for you to like, hey, I want to flip cars. Like it just, it came All, out of nowhere or? So my, so who, who inspired I was you? always coming to my house in the craziest cars that my homies had. Okay. But they're all a little bit older than me. We would all hoop together, like right. midnight basketball at the yeah. Y. But all my boys that I hooped with and, and grew up with, they were all into extra, uh, extracurricular activities. Gotcha. But they all had <laughs> the sickest cars. My dad was like, listen, if you're into cars, like you could go. He wasn't in the car business, but my grandfather was. Mm. And he was like, I could show you kind of how to do the car business. So you don't have, I don't want you to get into any trouble because I see all your friends have nice cars and they obviously are into other stuff. And yeah. so you can still have a nice car and not, you know, be doing other stuff. So now how did you mm. manage to get a uh, 10K? Um, oh, so I just saved the money that I had. I was working, it was crazy. I was working at a little Japanese restaurant 
and at they a were, young age, huh? Yeah, and they were paying me under the table. Mm. And it was back then when you, if you remember, like the burner phones that were like unlimited. Yeah, my, yeah. My, my yeah. friends used to sell those phones that you could oh buy, my gosh. and they were unlimited. So what I would do is I would go in the back. And I would have the phones in, in my earphones, and I would wash the dishes in the back, and I would be on calls the entire time. But it was like a, it was a limited phone. Trying to sell. Phones. Yeah, I was trying to, no, not phones, but I was trying to sell whips and this and oh. that and put deals together. But I was washing dishes at the same time Yeah. at the restaurant because they would pay me cash, and then they would give me a meal to go mm. every time I came in there. And was so you didn't one. have to pay for food. I didn't have to pay so for food. Save a little extra. I didn't have to pay for food, and they pay me cash, and they let me talk on the phone. Yeah. So I was just in there at night <clears throat> washing dishes and still trying to do some deals on the side. And then I saved up enough money, and then I got a few friends and family members. I was like, yo, this is my business plan. This is what I want to do. And they were like, okay, everyone threw in like a grand, a couple grand, and then put together like 10 grand real quick. And then, you know. Mm, okay, just, so you were, you were pretty resourceful at a young age. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I needed the money to pay for my insurance for my own car. And so I had to have a job in order to do that. And then I was trying to think, like, what else could I do that makes more money than I was doing? Absolutely. But I needed... I was doing that one hustle or whatever while I could figure out another one. I had that one down and then I got into the next one and was able to excel from there. What is the, um, like in terms of scaling, cause obviously look, look where you're at. You got your own show, uh, you produce 60 to 150 million <laughs> a yeah. year. Uh, but how did you get to that point? Now I know that I don't want to make you give, give us a long response. You're, you're, you're learning the business, you're buying cars, you're selling it. It's like, what, how did you get to that level? I'll get straight to it. Get to it. I was at a hotel working. I would come in at 7 AM and I would leave at midnight. Okay. Wow. I was living in the hotel room at the hotel. How old? In my twenties. In your twenties. Okay. Right. This is when things started getting more serious. I'm assuming. Late, late 20s. Okay. Right? And I would come in at 7 a.m. and I would leave at midnight and I would get three breaks. And I was living in a hotel room. Wow. So I would never leave the property. That's crazy. So I got the property in the Guinness Book of Records. It was on Oprah twice. For real? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can Google it. And uh, while I was there, I saved up. I was making like 100 grand a year. Okay, 100 grand a year. I, I late 20s, right? Yeah, okay. I saved up 300. Okay. I went into the owner's office and I said, I need a day off. And they're like, for what? I said, I'm coming to LA to Riverside to go to the auction and I want to buy a Rolls Royce. Okay. Wait, wait, so just just to make sure I'm yeah. following along yes. too. Okay, yes. so you, you're you working at a resort. I'm working at a resort okay. in Colorado. Got you. And you saved up 300K. Uh, yes, and, okay. because there was nothing to do. Got you. I was living, I had no rent. Right. Had no expenses, had the company phone. I had, and I was basically, I was flipping cars on the side but running the hotel. Okay, fire. But I would never fire. leave. So there wasn't like I was going to the club or going to Nobu and- You weren't wasting any time. Yeah, no, there was no, yeah. there was nothing to spend money on. You were either skiing, snowboarding, snowmobiling, hiking, fishing, or doing some something that didn't cost any money. Yeah, how much were you making at the resort? Working at I was the making a hundred grand a year. Okay, so a hundred grand a year at the resort and then flipping cars was just additional. Yeah, just flipping. Gotcha. I would, I would but it like, wasn't like your main source. Yeah, no, wow. I was just like baby buying one or two while That's I was crazy. at the resort, flipping them. I would have them for sale on eBay and and whatever, and I would sell them, buy another one, Got rock you. it for a little bit, sell it, you know, yeah, while yeah. I was running the resort, I was still passionate about cars. Got so you. I tell the owners, after like my third or fourth year, hey, I want to go buy this Rolls Royce. They're like, oh, you're crazy. You're out of your mind, but whatever. As long as you're back the following day, yeah. you can. So I fly to LA. Okay. I go to Riverside, actually yeah. Ontario. Okay. I get out to Ontario airport. I take a cab to Riverside. I go to Riverside and I get into the auction. On Mannheim the, Riverside? Mannheim Riverside. Okay, okay. I go into my, my, I get on with my friend's license. Um, and at this point, I'm starting to like know a few people in the game that have been doing it for years. That's when the Ghost first came out. Black Ghost, silver hood, white interior, black piano wood, insane. Rolls Royce Financial was running like 10 or 15 of them. Okay. So the car comes in, every, do every dollar that I have, boom, I buy the car. I go in, I gotta figure out going to the bank. How much was the car? 300. So it's like three, every, every three, wow, five that with so, the auction fee was like 310. So you're telling me that you were pretty much broke after buying the car. That's it. It was right around 300 grand. Okay. So I go get a check, pay for the car and I drive all the way back to Colorado. Okay. So I'm like, man, how am I going to figure this out? So 
I gotta go straight into work. So they have the car washes that like you put the coins in and they use the big nasty brushes. Yeah. You ever seen those? Yeah, I think I've seen, seen yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, washes? the old school washes, yeah, with, with the, the brushes. Pressure yeah, yeah, yeah. You so washed it with that? I did it myself. I took pictures and I went to work. So I throw it online. I, at, at the time, I think it was like Auto Trader or eBay or whatever. So I throw the car online like the next day, the, the listing is published, my phone rings. Or I put it on for like three ninety nine. Three okay. So you, you you bought it for a good price then? Yeah, I bought it for okay. a really good okay. price. Okay. My phone rings. He's like, What's up? This is Alex from Beverly Hills, O'Gara. Okay. He's like, I'm the used car manager. He was like, I was coming to buy the car, but I got stuck in traffic. I have it pre sold. I see that you got it. You know, I, I want this car. Yeah. And I was like, It's three ninety nine. He was like, Okay, done. Just like that, huh? Just like that. And I okay. thought it was a joke. And I was like, <laughs> I was like whatever. I didn't even have wire info yeah, at the time. That's funny. I went in my bank and I was like, hey, I need wire info. They're like, oh, no, son, you're being scammed. I said, no, I just sold a Rolls Royce. <clears throat> it's out here. I'm selling it to a guy there. I need to get the, the info so these people can pay me. Yeah. And they're like, whatever. So they give me the info. The guy pays. The wire comes in, like, instantly. So I made what I was making, close to what I was making the entire year. Right, of just off of one. I went back into the office. I called my mentors. Very important to have mentors, yeah, coaches, yeah, and, absolutely. and a network. I called my mentor who trained me in hospitality. He trained everyone with the Ritz Carlton school, ladies and gentlemen, serving ladies and gentlemen. I called him. Yeah. I said, I just made my whole check. He's like, what do you mean? I said, I went and bought a Rolls Royce and I sold it and I made what I'm making at the hotel. And one year, I think I made a one deal. He said, can you do it again? Yeah. You said, hell yeah. He said, can you do it again? I said, I don't know. I think so. <laughs> He said, well, if you can do it again, let's train a new manager, give them your notice, and boom. Yeah. Go do it full time. And so that's what we did. So what was, the, what was the next car you did? The next portion of this was insane. Tell me. It was insane. Tell me. So I, now I have like 400 grand. Okay. I train up this new manager. I load up my suits, threw them in like I had like a Range or G-Wagon at the time, and I drive to Scottsdale. I just wanted to get out of the cold. I was like, you know what, it's freezing here. I just want to get to some warm weather. It was like 20 below in Colorado and it was like 70 degrees in Scottsdale. Okay. I went into Mastro's for the first time and I saw like Lambo, Lambo, Rolls Royce, everyone had on a Rolly. And mm -hmm. I was like, man, this is crazy. They brought out the steak with the hot plate. I was like, this is where I need to be. Cause that's where they founded Mastro's was in Scottsdale. So I, I didn't know that. Yeah, so oh. I went into the original one. Okay. And I was looking around because I knew I saw that there was money and yeah. opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking like, okay, everyone is having stakes. Everyone's got a Rolls and a Rolex. People are spending money here. This is what I need to be around. I wanted to be around money. Yeah. So I'm like, boom, this is where I'm staying. So I ended up staying. I got a house and I wanted to be in a hangar. Wait, so you bought a house or you just bought I just leased one. Okay. I was okay. like, I'm just going to lease a house. How much a month? Block. I, back then, I don't know, it was cheap, like five grand or something. Okay, okay. And you're just living off of that 400 grand, right? I'm living off the 400. Yeah, wow, yeah. So now I got to find a location. So my friend founded Ashley Furniture, and Levitt's Furniture. That's crazy. John Levitt's and his brother Gary, yeah. his best friends with my uncle. So I called him and I said, hey, um, can I hang my dealer license at your hangar? And he says, yeah, for sure. He's like, yeah, you can hang your, your, your license here. No problem. Yeah. So he comes back one day and I have it full of cars. And he's like, he's like, yo, you gotta get this, you gotta get this stuff out of here. <laughs> That's funny. He's like, you got way too much stuff in here, you gotta go. <laughs> Get out. He's like, man, you got to go find your own place. Mm. Time's up. I was there for like so a year. You, so you just bought a couple, like. How? Yeah, I got the license. I hung it at my friend's place, so I had no rent. Because my uncle and him, like, hooked it up. Let me let me get going there. Okay. And they're like, you got to find another place. So I went to find a hangar. Fast forward, I'm parked behind this hangar, and this G5 pulls up. Taxis right to the hangar. All these Escalades and Range Rovers get out. with All these guys and girls. I'm like, damn. Never been on a golf stream in my life. Yeah. I'm like, this is insane. I'm like, I need to see whoever that is. Yeah. This guy gets out with this big, long beard. I went up to him. The two hangers, they, his plane goes in the middle. The two hangers on the side are available. Yeah. I said, yo, my man, I need these two hangers. Da, da, da. I'm the biggest car guy in the world, blah, blah, blah. He's like, do you have a plane? I said, I don't have one yet. He goes, well, these, these are for people with planes, my man. Oh, shit. Take it, take it, have a nice day. And I yeah. said, what do you mean? He goes, well, you see these two tanks in the ground? They're fuel farms. You put your plane in there and you buy the fuel from us and that's how we make money, off the rent and the fuel per mm. gallon. So I'm like, damn. So I see him again. Yeah. And I said, what if I told you that you and the owner, you, you know, that owns the plane, could come in my dealership and take a car whenever you want? And he goes, me too? I said, yeah, you too. 
take your girl to Sedona, whatever you want to do. Yeah. He goes, let me get back to you. Calls me back. He goes, you're saying that I can come take a car and the owner can take a car? I said, yeah, for sure. I didn't really have that many cars, yeah, but I, yeah. I knew that if I could work some kind of deal with them that I would figure it out. Right. They said, done deal. The place is yours. Wow. So I went to my uncle. I said, look, I got these hangers. You can put some planes and cars, all this stuff in here. He's like, man, that's fire. You had to put it on a contract, though, just yeah, yeah. in case? Yeah, five-year okay, okay. five deal. Okay, okay, five-year deal, yeah, personal yeah. guarantee, okay. all the money I had. Wow. So my uncle says, God rest him. He says, y'all split it with you. He said, go get it. That's a good deal. Good job. Yeah. So at first, last security deposit, everything I had, I move in. I go to my uncle. I said, look, I need your half. I paid mine. He said, man, I'm not doing that. He goes, I'm out. He goes, I'm done. That's on you. He's like, F you. Hangs up. Yeah. I got to pay 50K a month. I don't know how I'm going to figure it out. Wow. I'm out of money. Three Suburbans pull up. It's like that one. Yeah. 20 people get out. I'm like, man, what is going on? And I see this I see this guy that I know. And he's like, hey, let me show these people around the office. This girl comes to my office. She goes, hey, I'm Lauren from Maxim Magazine. She's like, Super Bowl is coming to town. I'm looking for a place to do the Maxim Magazine Super Bowl party. Okay. I'm like, what's that have to do with me? She's like, my budget's 500K. I said, how are you? Come on in. Let me, <laughs> let me like, show you around. Yeah, that's crazy. <clears throat> so, oh, my God. She says, look, if you get the taxiway closed down, we'll give you the party. So I get the taxiway closed down because the planes had to stop pulling in between 5 and, and midnight on Saturday before Super Bowl. So I get that approved. I call her back. I said, listen, I got that approved. She goes, we're going with somebody else. I'm sorry. Oh, my gosh. She goes, wow. we're going with the casino because the casino has hotel rooms, and that's what we need. I fly to New York the next day with 600 bucks. I buy a one-way ticket. I had no, more, no money left. I had enough money to take a cab to Maxim's office. I go to Maxim's office, knock on the door. I say, yo, I'm here. They didn't know whether to call security or let me in. I said, it's me from Scottsdale. I worked all, I spent every dollar now. Yeah. Because I had to give deposits and this and that That's for all of wild. this stuff. Yeah. And they said, we're sorry, we're going with the other. The hotel. The hotel, because yeah. we need rooms. Damn. I said, I don't know what the hotel will do for you, but I'll do all the sponsorships. I'll do all the ground transportation. I'll take care of all the permits like I did for the taxiway. I will be your boots on the ground. I'll handle everything. Also, I don't have enough money to get home. I spent my last hour to come here to tell you how bad I need this party. Because I knew at that party, I would meet the people I needed to meet to get to where I am today. Yeah, yeah. And also, it would be financially beneficial, obviously. No, yeah, for sure. Network, networking is a powerful thing. I'm getting ne from the network, story. You already know, guys. Networking is a powerful yeah. thing. They called the owner at the time. We're in the conference room. She's telling him the story, how I flew there and don't have money to get home. Yeah. And he goes, man, what are you talking about? I said, sir, I'm here. I'm, uh, it's a guy from Scottsdale. I really need this party. My life depends on it. Yeah. He goes, you flew here for this party? I said, yes, I flew. I'm physically in your office from Scottsdale. I need this party. He goes, what are you guys waiting on? He goes, G give him the party. Give it to him. Yeah. 100%. They gave it to me on the spot. Cut me a check for 250 I flew home. I did all the sponsorships. I got Johnny nice. Walker. I got Dodge. I got everybody. That's and that's fire. Where, and that's where I met everyone at that party oh, to help me get to where I am today. Okay. Jamie, Lil Wayne, Bieber, you know, it was the who's who of that's you know, So that was the turning point. That was the turning point. Because wow. people were like they all called me and were like, Hey, you know, I'm doing French Montana's at my house. This person needs an airport pickup, this one wants a champagne, this one wants this. I'm taking care of everything. So, so, so it's, it's got, a full service. It's not just cars at no, this point. No, no. Yeah, at doing this it. point, we're done. It's nothing to do with cars. Wow. I'm meeting all these people based off the space that my cars were in for the party. I was the contact for the venue. Got you. So I, the Tau group did the tables and everything else, but my boys did the security. We did the ground service, transportation, and the sponsorships. So everyone came through my office was the green room. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So everyone was like, hey, there's, you know, Whenever this settles down, when you come to LA, we got you. Yeah. Wow. So okay. I went to Jamie's house, got you know to meet my best friend and producing partner, Jamie Fox. We started to do some deals together. We became super tight. He was like, "Man, what do you do, anyways?" I was like, "Oh, you know, I sell cars and boats and planes." And he was like, "Oh, cool. I'll introduce you to some people." Yeah. He introduced me to Chris Brown. And wow. This person and that person. And next thing you know, everything just took off, and we started. We did a deal with Drake and Jay Balvin on yeah. a La Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. And the deal was insane because we bought the car from Drake, and then it went to Medellin, Medellin, Colombia, to Jay Balvin. That's crazy. And, and he saw the whole deal happen. And he was like, "Man, this is a show." And, and then he executive produced and co-created the show with me, Million Dollar Wheels on Discovery wow. Plus and HBO Max, and that's how we got to where we are today. That's crazy. <laughs> that's a crazy. <laughs> that's crazy how that all turned out. That's man. the short oh version. Oh my of god. It. Can I ask you? Yes. When you do, when you do, okay. When you when you have a deal with Drake, right, for the yeah. LaFerrari, mm -hmm. are you able to say like what's your? 
percentage off of that? No, not really, because it was just, it was just like, it was just like, I mean, you want to try to average 10%. Okay. That's what you want to try to average. And that that car is like three million. That car was three million, so, you know, you could do the math there, but that one was a special car because, you know, Drake doesn't need to sell any of his cars. He doesn't sell anything. Yeah. He only sold it because Jamie asked him like, hey, will you sell my boy uh, this car? And I bought the car for myself. I was just in love with the car. And he had the only yellow one. He never drove. He drove it one time. Right. Yeah. You know, he gets driven around. He just, you know, he has collector items, but, he, you know, he's a huge car guy. We actually went to Vegas. We saw them, you know, hung with them and stuff. It was crazy. No, that's... And he ended up selling me the car. So you're telling me right now, and you also provide a service for, for, Absolutely. for celebrities, yeah. not just cars. It's like, oh, events and Whatever and you need. That's you know, crazy. Someone calls and want to go to Carbone. You know, we get a man. They want a car. Dropped off at the SBs tomorrow. You can, know. You, can you get me into Carbone? Yeah. <laughs> Ask Eric. I got Eric and Wes in two, two nights ago. That's crazy. They're there every night. That's wild. They're, that's, they're that's, the best. That's yeah, an Carbone. amazing story, man. What is uh, some advice to anyone that's watching right now for, for them to be ultra successful? Like, what is, because I, 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 just from your story, I hear a lot about networking and you're, you being resilient. Resilient. Like determined. Determined. Anything else? get around some people that are doing what you want Mm -hmm. surround yourself with some mentors if you want to make money surround yourself with people that are making money if you want to network and level up your network get around people that are doing better than you are yeah surround yourself with people that are doing better where they're where you want to be yeah right how does one do that i mean i know you already told your story yeah i mean the best i've always tried to be around you know the greats like mayweather and jamie and Balvin and these people that I admire because I'm always learning something from them. 100%. Even if I'm just standing next to them, they could be talking to the president, they could be talking, you know, to world leaders or this person or that person. You can learn from people like that or just, you know, could be your mom, could be your dad, it could be business people. You just want to be around people that are doing better than you are so you yeah. can learn something from them. But invest in yourself, invest in your network right important invest in your network because it's really your like you say in your videos your 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 net worth um, your network is your net worth your network is your net worth yeah and it's cliche but it's true yeah it's super true because if who you can get on the phone to do a deal is how you know how business is done um and bet you know betting on yourself put yourself first and bet on yourself Mm -hmm. obviously take care of your friends your family all that stuff but you have to think about betting on yourself and believing in yourself. Yeah, taking Be- the risk, right? Taking the yeah, risk. Yeah, yeah. Take that leap. Like Eric was saying in one of his videos, if, you, if you're trying to think about taking that jump, take the jump. Be prepared to fail. It's going to happen. Yeah. Just, you just got to keep, keep swinging. You got to keep swinging. The people that win are just the people that swung one more time. It's going to be a dogfight. I mm-hmm. tell people this every day. Being an entrepreneur, being successful at anything is difficult yeah that's true it's going to be hard it's not going to be easy you're going to get told no a thousand times all it takes is one yes yeah because if it was easy everybody would be doing if it, it right? was easy yeah, everyone so. would be doing but yeah. you just got to keep swinging yeah and just know on the on <clears throat> when it gets to the darkest hour because it will yeah and it will get scary and your cards and you will be, you had a lot of those your man. Cards <laughs> will be maxed out you may not know how you're gonna have gas in your tank you know but put god first and keep swinging absolutely and, and everything will work out yeah just knowing the other side of the, the this darkest point is greatness yeah but you know you have to be in there like i was listening to someone yesterday talking about michael jordan he said i never lost a game i just ran out of time damn Marlon, I so never lost. Yeah, I, I love LeBron as well, but I, ne- I never lost a game. I just ran out of time. Wow! So you just have to keep on going. Yeah, and not giving up. I love that, my man. Appreciate that. My where, pleasure, brother. Where can people find you? IG. Uh, wires only. Yeah, wires only is my IG. Um, WiresonlyClub.com is okay. our coaching program. Okay. If you want to sign up, be a member. Our 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 calls are once a week at six o'clock uh, they're amazing we've had guests like chief keith and corday and rich the kid and eric spotford and wes watson so there's people on there always dropping gems and knowledge and you know surround yourself with some greatness and uh watch videos like this because you can learn a lot you know that's fire all i gotta say is what a fantastic story see what we got out of this story with rd is being resilient is very important 
can't give up. You got to like really go the extra mile. And on top of that, you got to network because connections, networking and being resilient and hardworking and determined will take you to this level. I, I make this content for y'all. I want y'all to take a piece from every individual that you see, every story that you hear, and I want you to take it and, and really do something with it, okay? I really hate to see you just sitting down and not doing anything with your life. Do something, try something, put yourself out there, make yourself uncomfortable, okay? until you get comfortable and then get uncomfortable again. You can't have things that you never had before by doing the same things. No one's gonna do it for you. No one's gonna hold your hand and be like, here's a million dollars. You want a million dollars, you gotta go get it. It starts right now. Click that link, join our community, and uh, we're all leveling up in there, baby. Let's go. You tell me I'm something you need. But baby, you know that I'm bad for you, yeah. Why you gotta be so naive? If I treat you like one, I don't want. No, I'm just so hard to please I lie to your face to get what I want, babe Somehow you keep calling to me Why are you so naive, yeah, yeah